we can do laboratory testing for diazepam. There are point of care cups, either dips or, or point, of, point of care testing for bands of benzene that have dips and cups. They come in numerous uh, configurations. They're, they're broadly uh, uh, used. The only caution I have about the point of care devices, whether you use a dip or a cup, is that they're very, very susceptible to both false positives as well as uh, false negatives. So a presumptive positive on a point of care device should always be confirmed by a confirmatory uh, test. For laboratory screening, uh, this is testing that's performed in the laboratory, uh, like Corden. Uh, uh, we use enzyme amino assay to test for the benzodiazepines, the EIA method. And, and these are run on large automated clinical chemistry uh, analyzers. Then finally, there's confirmatory testing. And there's two techniques that are used in confirmatory testing liquid chromatopic tandem mass spectrometry, which is a technology that we use in all of the Cordes family of uh, drugs, and some other laboratories will use gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Both are acceptable uh, confirmatory uh, uh, methods. Now, the next slide shows the uh, cross-reactivity of the benzodiazepines on the initial screening test, which were performed by enzyme amino assay. The test that we use here at the Court of Forensic Solutions at Flagstaff, we calibrate our screening assay with lorimetazepam. And we have two cutoffs that are used, 200 nanograms and 300 nanograms cutoff. So what I've got shown here is the equivalent amount of the various benzo, either parent drug or metabolite, that it takes to get the same response as lorimetazem at either 200 or 300 nanogram cutoffs. 200 and 300 nanograms are, are standard uh, screening cutoffs that are used in, in the screening test for benzodiazepines. And as you can see, most of the common uh, benzo like alprazolam, alprazolam, diazepam, nordazepam, metazepam, tenazepam, tanzolam, triazolam, and the metabolite chlorazepam cross-react very, very favorably uh, in, the, in the screening assays, which means that they're very readily uh, uh, picked up. For instance, so that alprazolam, it only takes uh, 79 nanograms of alprazolam to get the same uh, response as 300 nanograms as our uh, cutoff calibrator for metazepam. So all of these drugs have, uh, uh, requires less than 300 nanograms to get the, the, get the same response as a calibrator at 300 nanograms. So they're very, very good at picking up this group of drugs. Now, if we look at three other drugs, lorazepam, it takes approximately 890 nanograms of lorazepam to get the same response as 300 nanograms as our calibrator. So what this means is that lorazepam is not readily picked up in the screening assay unless it's in relatively high concentration. Now let's look at 7-aminoclonazepam, which is the primary metabolite of clonazepam that's found in urine samples. It takes 8,600 nanograms of 7-aminoclonazepam to get the same uh, response on the screening assay that we would get with more metazepam at 300 nanograms per mil. So what this means is that the screening assay is not particularly effective at picking up uh, clonazepam. So if someone is using clonopin or clonazepam, uh, it's highly, highly unlikely that we're going to get a positive uh, benzodiazepine screen with clonazepam. So if you're monitoring someone for compliance, with clonazepam, unfortunately, the screening assays are not, not, are not very effective at that. You would have, actually have to use confirmatory methods to, uh, to monitor that. In the same vein, the 7 amino nitrazepam, which is the primary metabolite of prolipinol, is also not picked up very well with the uh, screening assays. And for the Z drugs like Zolpidem or Andium, uh, the benzodiazepine screen is is virtually useless at picking up any of these drugs because you need an excess of 100,000 nanograms of sulfonam to get the same response as you would get with 300 nanograms of the calibrator. So the, uh, the, the, the screening assay is not very, is, 
is not a factor that picking up salt for them. So basically, the only thing I want you to get from this slide is the fact that clonazepam, the primary metabolite of clonazepam, 7 amino clonazepam, is not detected very readily. Uh, but for all practical purposes, I should just say that 7 amino clonazepam cannot be picked up uh, by the benzodiazepine screen. So again, if you want to monitor compliance with clonazepam, you're going to have to look at a confirmatory uh, uh, test. Now, uh, again, regarding screening tests for benzodiazepine, uh, there are three drugs that are, are fairly well known to, to result in false positive screening results for the benzodiazepine. And the, the three drugs are sertraline, which is an antidepressant sold under the brand name of, of Zoloft. So someone who's using Zoloft uh, and, and not using any of the benzos, Quite often, the benzodiazepine screen will come back a presumption positive, and it can be a false positive caused by uh, sertraline. Diphenhydramine, which is an antihistamine, better known under the brand name uh, Benadryl, uh, in very, very high concentrations, diphenhydramine is also known to result in false positive results for, uh, for benzodiazepine. And finally, there's a uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, generic name is oxaprozin, goes by the brand name of Napro. This is not terribly, very commonly prescribed, but uh, this drug can also result in a false positive uh, uh, screening assay for, for, diazo, for, for the benzodiazepine. The only point I want to make on this is that whenever you get a presumptive positive screening result for benzodiazepines, you should always follow up by confirmatory testing, either uh, using LCMSMS or using uh, GCMS. Uh, uh, now, uh, let's look at the next slide. And this slide depicts confirmatory test uh, results. So if you perform confirmatory testing on a urine specimen or an oral fluid specimen, and if the test results come back positive for nordazepam, tenazepam, and oxazepam, the most likely drug that's causing those three drugs to uh, show up is uh, diazepam. And if you go back and look at the uh, benzodiazepine metabolism chart that I looked at a uh, few slides ago, you can see the diazepam is metabolized to nordazepam, which uh, ultimately results in oxazepam formation. The alternative pathway is tenazepam going to oxazepam. So the presence of nordazepam, tenazepam, uh, and oxazepam uh, almost always is due to uh, use of uh, diazepam or valium. Now, if the confirm confirmatory results come back for nordazepam and oxazepam, the most likely uh, reason for, for these test results is someone is using chlorodiazepoxide and chlorazepate, nebrium, and uh, transate. Alternatively, if the confirmatory test results come back positive for oxazepam and tenazepam, this is primarily uh, probably use of diazepam uh, or tenazepam. If you remember, diazepam is, is metabolized to both tenazepam and oxazepam, and tenazepam is uh, metabolized to oxazepam. Now, if your confirmatory test results only come back positive for oxazepam, uh, it, it, it's very, very difficult to determine exactly what drug was, was used because oxazepam is the in, in metabolite of use of diazepam, tenazepam, oxazepam, chlorodiazepoxide, and uh, chloracetate. So, so in the presence of oxazepam, it's very, very difficult to determine exactly what the source of that particular uh, uh, metabolite is. <clears throat> Again, the next slide, what I want to show on this next slide is the window of detection. It's over on the uh, left hand, uh, extreme right hand uh, column. And again, this chart is also available on the Court of Health Solutions uh, website. Uh, you can download it uh, along with the other chart that I uh, that I showed. But what I want to look at on this slide is in the extreme right hand column, the window of detection. And this is approximate. It depends upon individual metabolism and depends on the dosage of the drug 
and it depends upon uh, on how long the drug has been uh, used. But diazepam, Valium, the Nordiazepam and Tamazepam metabolites can be detected uh, in a urine sample for approximately three to five days. Oxazepam can be detected for up to two to three weeks with, uh, with, with, with chronic heavy use of, uh, of uh, Valium. So it can stick around for a long time because uh, diazepam is actually, can actually be stored in adipose tissue. Someone using Librium, the metabolized Nordazepam and Oxazepam can be detected for about three to five days. Same thing with uh, transine, three to five days. Uh, Fluorazepam, the primary metabolite, can be detected for up to two weeks after use. Looking at the intermediate acting uh, drugs, these would be drugs like uh, alprazolam, mesopam, methazepam, tenazepam, clonopin. Uh, these can be detected for primarily three to five days. Now, if you look at oxazepam, if oxazepam is used by a cell, or a tenazepam is, is used, then, then the oxazepam can, can, the window of detection is relatively short, three to five days, but if the oxazepam is a metabolite diazepam, it can actually be detected urine for up to two to three weeks uh, with, uh, with chronic use. So one has to be a little bit careful interpreting these uh, results. The other intermediate acting drugs, dazolam, clazepam, and clazepam. As I mentioned earlier, these are not major players in the United States, so we do not test for them uh, in our laboratory. The short-acting benzos like midazolam and triazolam, uh, their window of detection is relatively short, you know, it's roughly on the order of 24 to 48 hours. Again, I want to mention that these window of detection times that I've got here are uh, approximate uh, and vary on individual metabolism and also on the length of time that the drugs have been used, and also a little bit on the dosage of the drugs that has been, uh, been used. 